Hello everyone. This video gives you the introduction to the MongoDB database and the not only SQL features. So the contents of the presentation will be a brief introduction to the MongoDB database, uh, which follows the uh, NoSQL features and what are the differences between the structured query language and the NoSQL features and how do we set up the uh, MongoDB database on our local computer and how do we make use of those commands to run our database operations uh, with respect to the running the MongoDB server in the client and we try to see some basic uh, operations such as you are creating, reading and updating and deleting operations of your NoSQL commands using your MongoDB documents with a couple of examples. So let us start with what is MongoDB. So but MongoDB is a, a document database uh, with the scalability and flexibility that you want with the querying and indexing that you need. In other terms, basically whenever we make use of a database, so we try to retrieve the data uh, for various purposes. Retrieve in the sense, try to get some data from your databases and give the data to various entities. It can be users or another set of processes which are working on our web applications. So not only retrieving the data, another important feature that we try to do it on the database is the searching operation. When you have a huge collection of data or a voluminous amount of data is there on your database, then the searching process is the most important feature that you look for to get the uh, uh, requested data within a short amount of time. So the querying data, for retrieving and as well as for searching is the most important uh, features for our database operations. And the MongoDB provides those two operations very effectively for a huge collection of data that is stored on our database. Uh, the MongoDB follows a, a, a document oriented database in the sense that a document is a collection of various uh, uh, other set of objects information. So basically this document oriented database follows the uh, features of uh, no SQL. No SQL stands for not only structured query language. So it also has certain kind of uh, uh, features which we see it in our next slides. Uh, the MongoDB software is basically written using C++ and it supports various uh, other uh, programming languages to interact with. So the back end is what your MongoDB is there and the front ends you can have your JavaScript or the other programming languages such as uh, Python, Ruby, Perl, Java, C Sharp, C++ uh, and other uh, set of programming languages which can easily interact with your uh, backend database of MongoDB which contains a huge collection of data. So let us see what are the functionalities of MongoDB. Uh, the MongoDB basically is a uh, supports the dynamic schema in the sense that uh, there is no data definition language. Uh, as with respect to your uh, RDBMS, that is your relational database management system. In the whenever you use a relational database management system such as MySQL or Oracle or Microsoft SQL, where we uh, define our schema, the structure of our uh, database tables. So that structure remains the same throughout our database operations and throughout our applications whenever we are running certain. Uh, operations on the data of the corresponding application. So there we uh, give our schema a predefined structure with so and so attributes and so and so relationships and so and so constraints. But whereas in MongoDB, the advantage is that it does not uh, require any such kind of uh, pre-definition of your structure to your database objects. So it basically uses a document structure. A document is like as a collection of various other objects. I will see what is that structure is. And it uses secondary indexes for our searching process to be very efficient. And because it, when it searches, it searches on a huge collection of data. There's a voluminous amount of data is available and the searching process has to take very short amount of time. So you can have your B plus tree indexing mechanisms on this kind of databases. Uh, and of course, it supports the query language. Uh, it supports through the application programming interface methods uh, to retrieve and do other operations on our databases. 
it's uh, does the atomic rights so whenever you do certain transactions on your databases those transactions have been successfully completed those are basically your uh, your writing your updating certain uh, updates onto your databases and which are going to be atomic in the sense that it will not depend on another set of operations and it will be fully consistent across that particular documents that you use it in your database it also supports the master slave replication because whenever your uh, uh, database is connected to various other uh, uh, data other databases which are in the network so we can have uh, master slave uh, connections wherein you can get the data from other set of databases which are connected over the network across the different places so it also supports the horizontal scaling you can uh, slice your databases slice in the sense you can make partitioning the partitioning process of data we call it as sharding and it supports the horizontal way you can slice your databases in the number of records that is the number of rows in terms of your uh, documents so that you will see it in our examples and it also uh, do not support the joins for your uh, transactions so when the joins if you might have seen the rdbms mysql commands there is a, a different set of joins are there to support uh, data retrieval across the different uh, entities of your databases so but uh, that is going to be really complex but this mongodb do not support those kind of uh, join operations which is very flexible for us to use it so you suppose a uh, very writing a very simple queries yes uh, and you don't require uh, entity relationship diagram as you might have seen for your designing your rdbms databases you uh, the prerequisite or the initial steps that you do is basically you need to find out the relationships among the various entities so when you want to uh, build up a big database so the entity relationship diagram will give you the uh, referential uh, processing as well as to have the uh, data retrieval process how the entities are related with each other but this kind of uh, uh, relationship diagrams that is the entity relationship diagram do not uh, been Uh, considered in our mongodb databases so of course this mongodb is not uh, well suited for very heavy and complex transactions types but nevertheless it supports for our social networking websites like your facebooks or your google charts and all we make use of this uh, mongodb very effectively so here let us see some of the benefits of uh, no sql when compared to the sql of your rdbms uh there is an elastic scaling uh, there is an advantage of no sql when compared to the rdbms sql so in the rdbms uh, whenever you will look for a scaling up the operations in the sense that whenever you are looking for a big data to be stored you require big servers uh, whereas in no sql the scale out is uh, to distribute the data across multiple hosts seamlessly without having a big servers you require so the elastic means you are increasing the more number of users more number of data is been added up that kind of feature easily supported with your no sql very effectively so you require database uh, analyst specialist for you to maintain your rdbms databases whereas no sql requires less management automatic repair and simpler data models so you don't require very much highly specialist for you to maintain the databases so big data operations that's what we are big data applications the present uh, it era is all looking about so you whenever you want to store those big data and do uh, operations on those voluminous and uh, velocity and veracity of our data which is been need to be playing with various applications across the internet so which is basically a big data uh, your rdbms do not support that capacity and has got a lot of constraints on your database designs but no sql nevertheless is designed for you handling the big data applications very effectively and easily and it also suppose a uh, flexible data models you can have you can change your uh, schema that is what your dynamic schemas it is not having a predefined schema and no sql databases are more relaxed in the structure of the data that you want to store it so if you look to the relational database management system uh, transaction properties such as uh, asset properties where you look for your transactions should be as satisfying the atomicity the consistency the same data should be there across the database across the entities uh, with different data fields it should be isolation property and as well as durability these are the asset properties which you might have studied in your database management system course whenever we correlate with your uh, 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 no sql Uh, the acid instead of acid we call it as a base properties which basically requires for the queries to be 
uh, written easily and that, uh, that particular operation should be consistency and should be a partition across the distributed databases which do, which does some soft state uh, changes for the databases and eventually looks for the consistency of data across those distributed databases of your mongodb so those are the little bit comparisons on the nosql and the sql uh, with respect to many database applications so now look to the uh, programming wise so when you look to the rdbm concepts you have certain terminologies such as uh, what you call it as a database and what is called as a table or a view so row columns index join foreign keys partition these are the terms related to the rdbms databases but when you correlate with our mongodb which follows uh, no sql concepts so the database is also here is also been termed as a database whereas the uh, objects such as tables we use here we call it as a, a collection and that collection contains several documents uh, the rows which have been uh, we term in our rdbms the rows of a tables now here we term it as a documents which supports the binary script object notations uh, basically one form of uh, json format which supports the uh, at, uh, key value attribute space and kind of i will see certain examples in the uh, following slides we have a column name which we usually call it as uh, field names on our mongodb and of course the index uh, terms remains the same across the rdbms and the no sqls so here uh, we have uh, in rdbms like mysql uh, oracle and microsoft sql you have join operations whereas here we can have certain uh, similar feature in terms of embedded documents instead of joins so uh, a document is embedded onto an, another document which pro performs the join operation logically in rdbms we have the, for the referential integrity we have a foreign key constraints whereas in mongodb we use the term called reference and for partitioning the tables uh, either horizontal or vertically here we call the term as uh, shardings or uh, uh, slicing of the particular databases so if you look here in this uh, small example uh, you have a C, uh, sql tables you have student tables you have school details tables you have marks tables uh, like this these tables are related with each other with different set of uh, attributes which uh, they are been connected with each other uh, but when you look to the uh, mongodb is the no sql so this entire structure is been changed to something called as document so open floor base followed by a corresponding closing floor base this particular uh, data that you write in between your open floor brace and the closing floor brace is what you call it as a document and this uh, students uh, uh, we'll see underscore id is basically your uh, um, um, binary script object notation is a unique identifier so this is a unique identifier which identifies this particular document uh, to be identified with the number one so in this particular students uh, table if you see in the sql that is been written in terms of your attribute and the corresponding value so student name is the attribute here uh, and the corresponding value is uh, Jasmine Scott, which has been separated with your colon symbol. So the colon left hand uh, side, you write the attribute and the colon's right hand side, you write the corresponding value. This uh, is being correlated with this student's table. So this is how you write a document here. So in this, inside the student's document, you have a, another document called school. So this is the document name school the school document name colon followed by open floor base and the corresponding closing floor base so between these uh, open and closing floor bases of the school you have your uh, uh, details about what is the school id what is the name of the school these are all the address the city the state the zip code are all the attributes and the corresponding values of those attributes the school document is embedded in a, a student's document that's what you are going to have a join operation here and you have another document called marks so if you see the table of the marks here so the marks the table consists of uh, so these are the various marks for that particular student id so here we write the corresponding values this is just a particular uh, simple notation of a document you need to understand the document contains some data in terms of attribute and the corresponding value so when you write the sql commands or the sql statements you write something like select star from followed by the uh, where conditions so here you will write something statement like this uh, db is a database always you take this object dot 
followed by the uh, documents and the corresponding operations here. So this is how you write it. Let us see how do you uh, practice it. Once you practice these commands, it is easy only. So let us go. Uh, before going to the practice, just one more information about the not only SQL, not only SQL, that is no SQL, is been used in various uh, uh, software such as Redis, React, Neo4j, Hypergraph, MongoDB, CouchDB, Cassandra, HBase. These are all different softwares of your backend database management system supporting various big data applications and other internet applications data where your web applications are very much dependent on your networks. So here, this NoSQL, the terminology that we use, uh, NoSQL, uh, the terms such as key value, that's basically your attribute and the corresponding value. In this software, Redis and React, we use the term called key value uh, or key value database. Whereas in Neo4j and Hypergraph DB, we call it as graph database, where your graph contains certain set of nodes and those nodes and the edges where those nodes and edges represent the data that is been uh, uh, transactions which are happening on those nodes from one node to another node where your data has been moving from one place to another place. So basically the Neo4j and Hypergraph database, they support the NoSQL features in terms of graph database. So just now you're seeing the MongoDB, the MongoDB database supports a document oriented where your data is entirely represented in a document which open cloud base and a closing cloud base. Similarly, CouchDB also follows the document oriented databases. Whereas the software such as Cassandra and uh, HBase do follow the terminology of column family, basically the new skill here we are going to call it as a columns or your field that is basically your attributes and their corresponding values where we call it as those. Uh, so these are the different terminologies we use across different softwares. So let us see a little bit more in depth on the uh, document. So a document starts with your open floor base followed by a closing floor base. So this uh, underscore ID is the basin uh, ID, which is by default, it is generated. If you want, it is basically a binary form. That is what your uh, the structure here. If you want to specify your own ID, yes, you can also specify it. But uh, if you don't specify it by default, the MongoDB uh, server assigns an ID for each document. So the each document is being identified uh, with a unique ID. So if you don't uh, assign it, the user is not given any ID number to the document. Uh, by default, the uh, server, uh, MongoDB servers assigns a particular ID in the binary format. So this MongoDB stores data in a flexible, that is what you call it as flexible. It is very easy to understand, very easy to read. And uh, of course, you are very easy to store it and very easy to search and as well as very easy to perform operations on this data in a very easy manner. So here, you can see this is a basically a document which contains the details of a person and the corresponding address field, which is an inside a document. So here, how your documents uh, stores the uh, data of different objects. So this entire uh, document is basically an object here, which can easily interact with various other objects uh, of your uh, web applications. So. So the installation process, uh, you can go to the mongodb.com website and try to download the uh, exe file for the setup exe file. And uh, while the installation process is happening, please make sure that you also install the mongodb compass. Basically a compass is a user interface like what you see in the PHP admin of your, uh, uh, the LAMP stack or your WAMP stack. So you can install both the things by default, keep the conditions, um, uh, whatever the default uh, uh, condition means enables are there, you keep it as it is and just uh, click the next, next button, you will, your software will be installed. But please do remember two important uh, steps we need to perform here. So once you install in this, uh, I have installed MongoDB 3.6, you may have the latest version also, but uh, this one, the one which is installed sometime back to my system. So here, uh, now let us see, after once you successfully install, uh, make sure that you set your uh, the bin folder of your MongoDB server onto your uh, environment variables of your system so that uh, this particular MongoDB server software can be ac accessed across your uh, computer. It means across different applications easily. So once you set up your path, uh, the environment variables path correctly by specifying like this, if you see it on my computer, my computer will just show you how to uh, set it. So my computer, this PC, go to your properties. 
So once on the properties, go to advanced system settings and go to your environment variables. So under your system variables, go to the path. So if you see the path, so here the path, go to edit. If you see here, this is what your MongoDB server. So the MongoDB server, uh, you have put it in your environment variables. So that environment variables will be helpful for you to access that software across multiple applications very easily. So that is the step number one. And step number two, if by default you have installed your uh, MongoDB server on the C drive, so please make sure you are going to create a database folder. So you can see uh, C colon slash data slash DB. This is what you're very much required for your MongoDB to store all your data under this particular folder. So create a directory data under the data you please create one more subdirectory db so that in under db all your documents are going to be stored here so once you have done this particular setup uh, you can now let us see how to run this so the first step will be to make sure that you are running a server so once your in, uh, install means the installation is over and your configuration path is set up and your database uh, folder is created the next step will be starting your mongodb server so a server has to run in the background then only uh, the client mongodbs can interact with the server and do your operations so it is basically uh, a command driven process you need to be initiated here so how do you do it so go to your uh, terminal and go to the command prompt so on the command prompt you can see type mongo d so mongo d specifies that is basically your server so once you click uh, enter once you set the system variables part correctly so now you can see uh, your uh, server is running up server is up and running and you can see that the, the port 27017 is being made use of to listen your mongodb server is listening on to this particular port so you're uh, listening to 127.0.0.1 which is basically your ip address for your local host so the local host uh, database server can uh, this your mongodb server is listening onto the port so this is what uh, it is uh, the server so just keep running the server uh, don't do not close this window just minimize this window and uh, this is how this what the screen print is so now go to uh, the next step starting the client on another command window so go to your uh, another uh, command prompt so you can go to another folder so you are now moving to an another folder other than c drive so you can go to your internet technologies materials review so here just now i come to this particular path now you can use to make the client to run issue the command mongo so the mongo is basically the client command which tries to connect to your mongodb uh, server at the back end so once you click mongo so here the mongo is you get the prompt here like your mysql prompt you get the mongo prompt here so the mongodb now the client is now connected to your server and it is listening here so you can do your command operations at this particular command prompt very easily so the commands that you can do it is basically uh, you want to create a database here so the create creation database command is basically use my db one so uses the command to create a my db database one on mongodb so once you created it switches to your my db one so all your uh, documents and the collections are going to be stored under my db one so now you can issue the commands so this is how you can create you can first create a collection under the collection you have several documents and inside the documents you give so this is how the documents open floor brace followed by closing floor brace you're creating one document at a time you can create several documents and whenever you want to search certain operations on your documents you can go use the uh, find command so in this example uh, the step number five you want to create a collection the collection name is my collection so this my collection is going to be stored under the uh, my database if you want to specify the size for your my collection you can specify the size how much you want and the maximum number of documents that you can store it under this particular my collection so the document you are creating under this uh, my collection that is the collection name you are creating insert uh, you are creating one document by using the function insert one so like this you can insert many insert many is another method is there 
you can insert all so there's a different commands you can browse it onto the mongodb website and understand those various commands of inserting it here so now you have some similar commands like you are managing like you want to find or you want to update for a specific field you can easily select that particular attribute and you just use the dollar set symbol to give a new value your new setting or updating the age of that particular document that my collection uh, under that my collection you are selecting that particular field age and you are setting it like this if you want to search you can search by attribute or you can search by the corresponding value of that attribute there are various commands you can do it so you can run these commands on your command prompt as well you can do it on the user interface if you are very much concerned for the user interface once you install so your server will be running at the back background so keep the server opening on the background so do not close that one and once you install uh, installation process is over uh, you might have installed this mongodb compass so invoke the mongodb compass uh, this is basically is user interface which is very much similar to your php mydvn instead of writing the commands in the command prompt you can as well make use of this user interface so once it is uh, loaded all your plugins you will find that particular interface like this the interface consists of uh, basically the user authentication if you are providing who which user the root user or the admin it will ask it otherwise uh, if there is no authentication you, know, you will get the uh, interface which is going to be similar to you on your system you can just see the local host you can see that the by default port the mongodb is having 27017 you can just simply say connect so once you connected it uh, yes this is how the interface uh, looks you can create your own database so just the mydb one which is the one which you have just created from the command prompt here so you can select that and this is the my collection one uh, as of now nothing is there you can add data to this you can import the document if it's already structured for you or you can, if you want to write it you can write all your documents here if there are any errors errors will be shown here so you write the uh, attributes and the corresponding values in the form of documents and that gets in click the insert and it gets inserted here uh, this is how you can do the mongodb operations yeah thank you and uh, before we wind up the session so these examples are given to you so you can see these are the crude operations the create read update and delete operations you can see the remove is the function which is used here in the mongodb and the references i have taken from this particular website you can make use of these references for uh, uh, further practice of your mongodb commands yeah thank you